Okay, I believe we are ready. I think we got a quorum. We got uh, Jim, Tom, Mike, myself. That's four, two missing. Okay. Ready? Let's call the meeting to order. So, uh, first thing on the agenda, which I don't have in front of me, um, the approval of the minutes from the last meeting. You got a copy of those this morning um, in your email. Uh, about a half an hour ago. There were three things in there that uh, I wanted to check on or at least report back on. The first was in the minutes, it said that um, I would attend the March meeting and give them an update, talk about the shelter and a few other things. I did go to that first meeting in March, um, but that was um, right at the, the start of the, the COVID. And uh, when I talked to the mayor, it was decided that they had enough on the agenda so we didn't do the report. Um, so when they come back in September, if uh, Councilman Allers wants, we will do a report when they come back after their uh, July break in August, September timeframe. The other in there, it said that you gave us a foot of the design, 60% design. Is that, you didn't give us a 60% design on the foot of the bridge, did you? No, it would, it would probably have been the sidewalks. Then. Yeah, so take a look that at the counts. minutes, correct that because it said under the foot of the bridge. Yeah. And then the uh, the final thing that was a question that we asked, and it'll either come up now or during the lighting study, but in the minutes, um, I had asked, did any in the studies that have been done to date on the lighting, they talked about turtle disorientation. And I asked if they had ever done a uh, any assessment as to whether the disorientations were based on faulty lighting that we had, would they've been corrected under the design study. So if they haven't, then I'll bring it up when we get to the uh, lighting RFP. So anybody else have comments on the minutes? No. No, okay. I'm good. Then uh, with that one correction on the 60% design at the foot of the bridge, I have a motion to accept them. Make a motion. Seconded. Is that Heidi I heard? Yes. All right. Okay. Next up on the agenda was the, um, the proposed RFP um, development. And so I sent a copy of, uh, I, I reviewed it, I looked at it, made some comments myself. And what I asked is if Chelsea would bring that up on our screens. So we're all looking at the same thing. Um, we'll do my comments last, but let's start with uh, Tom. After review, and then we'll go around, get everybody's comments. We'll add them to the, uh, um, get them to, to Chelsea and discuss them as, as we go through each one of them. But Tom, did you have uh, comments on it? Uh, no, I really don't at this point. Okay. Mike? No, no comments right now. Heidi? No. Uh, Jim. No. Okay, then we'll, who did I miss? Uh, nope. Okay, so we'll go to mine then. So well, if you can, go ahead. John, and, can, you, or, can, you, yep. can you back up one second? Can we just, um, we need to make note of either excused or unexcused of oh, okay. the, the attendance. Um, yeah. All right. Present R. Tom Gressman, Jim Nickel, John Goggin, uh, Councilman Allers, Mike Childs, and Heidi Youngworth, and missing is absent. Not missing, is Ed, either excused absent, or unexcused. Absent is Ed Scott. Is that excused or unexcused? No, he, he was notified, he's in town. He opted not to come, correct? That is true. Okay. He's absent. Unexcused. <laughs> it, it, it has to be. That is what our ordinance then, says. They are either excused or unexcused. Un. How's that? Thank you. He's absent. He could be present. He's chosen not to. He is 
absent, so therefore it is not previously excused and unexcused. Is that clear Thank enough? You. Thank you. Uh, so in this, can you uh, scroll over so you can see the comments? I will do my best. So go up to review, and then in review, it'll, it'll give you a chance to do that. There you go. Zoom out some. Can, you, can everybody see this? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. So if you click on the comments to go down, it'll, it'll point to the area that, that comes up in there. So the first comment, and I'll, I'll read them because I don't recall exactly where we are, but um, this was going to the lighting and lighting at the, said we'll do the lighting at crosswalks. One of the concerns that I would have is that the overall lighting in the mid island areas where there are no crosswalks that currently there are huge gaps and some places you go it's pitch dark and then as as joe pointed out with all those videos from a, a year ago um so part of what i want to ensure is that this study looks at not just lighting and crosswalks but there's sufficient lighting between the sidewalks and the road so areas where there is no um, crosswalk that there's visibility to pedestrians that choose to, to uh, cross places in mid island area. That's what that is referencing there. The second comment, um, this is the um, crosswalks um, and the lighting architecture. So it talks about lighting of the crosswalks. It talks about lighting, street lighting, but the issue was really that the coordination of street lighting as well as crosswalk lighting. As I understood from the engineer from the county when they first presented it to us well over a year ago, that as you put in street lighting and you put the pacing out there, you know, the spacing as to where it's gonna go, that when a crosswalk uh, lighting and street lighting conflict, you can get light blindness. And so when we talk about this lighting a crosswalk, I'd like to be clear that we're talking about the integrated lighting between street lighting, crosswalk lighting, and not separate descriptions of crosswalk will have this kind of lighting, street lighting will have this kind of lighting. In these intersections, they have to be um, an integrated pattern there, architected out. The other thing that comes up with crosswalks and also comes up with, you know, the foot of the bridge design and where it is, um, how on, in this RFP, are you going to um, work with this vendor to identify or come up with a street lighting design at the foot of the bridge? We, we don't know what that's gonna look like. Obviously the public safety committee said no crosswalks. The current plan looks at nine or 12, I forgot which it is. So the timing of this study, that lighting in a very critical area versus the work by FDOT in the county, somehow it has to be identified and coordinated as we're going through this. That should be brought up in this plan as well. Um, so um, these are what these comments mean, Trey. Chelsea, in any way you wanna make your own note to make it work in yourself, that's fine. The next one, um, this one is also, so this talks about the vendor, um, the select firm will coordinate, implement, so, implement the selected lighting alternatives. So if I'm reading this right, this vendor that's gonna come up with this impartial design or design options is then going to be the one that implements those impartial design options. To me, there's a, you know, I've been doing this for 50 years with RFPs and there's a conflict here in that I'm looking for the most objective opinion on design. What's the best way to do it? What's the best strategy for putting this out there? And if I'm also gonna be the one who's going to bid on the actual implementation or be awarded the actual implementation on this, there's a conflict in my mind that I, I have a built-in bias to say, this is what my implementation skills are really good at. So let's make sure the study leans to implementing what I'm really good at versus a very objective, this is the best way to do it to balance pedestrian and, and the uh, turtle lighting that we have here. That's a real concern for me. I can see if you wanna get this vendor that comes up with a design, the design that the council selects, and then have them be 
kind of the consultant to the town to make sure that it's implemented in the proper way, but to actually be responsible for the implementation, possible construction and that on something that they designed, objectively designed, I have a real problem with that. Um, the next uh, Murph in the review. So this is Murph is, Murph is the advisory committee and it's gonna review the responses uh, as above, yet the member of the PAC, the advisory committee is gonna be a member of Turtle Time. So on one hand, Turtle Time is gonna be on the committee that you know does the kickoff and discusses it. But then all that discussion they're having, Murph won't have visibility to when it comes time to reviewing the response. So I, I get why Turtle Time's on there and, and part of the advisory thing here, but either Murph gets both the review and is part of the pack, or Murph does both. I, I don't, I don't see how Murph can. How Wait, we can John, pass. where did you see where Murph was going to be part of the selection advisory committee? If you go up above in under purpose, I think it was purpose and scope advisory committees, Murph. Um, so. Um, right there, sir. Yeah. You're reading there. See where it says that, design that they're specs recommendations to both you, you all, and Murph. Not that right. Murph or you all will be on the selection advisory committee, but that the proposals will be brought to you all. all right, and then, but my point is that on one hand, Murph's going to be reviewing proposals, but doesn't get the benefit of the input part and part of the pack that that Turtle Time is getting. I'm advocating that I don't care the turtle time and Murph are both there, but I think for Murph to, well, I think Murph should be on both. If they're going to be on one, they should be on both. And if turtle time, um, and, and I get why they're there. And I think that's valuable because they do have opinions and insights that represent the community. I think they're part of the pack, but I also think Murph should be part of the pack as well in that sense. Okay. All right, uh, that one we just did. Next one, uh, so the vendor, it says here, that one's nothing. I deleted that one after I, okay. okay. Um, but this one here, uh, set the dates. I would like to see, not just say set two dates, I'd like to see the dates to be aligned with um, initial imp uh, input from uh, the community. You know, this is, they come in and they, they maybe have a packed kickoff meeting but then right after that, before they get too heavily into design and, and information gathering, that they do a public input meeting. But then the second public input meeting should be tied to maybe the 30% plan of the design. Some point, because we've seen, and we just saw it at, at, at uh, Bayfront Park, where the initial kickoff had one consideration, but as they got into the details of the designs, it changed dramatically. And what I'd like to see is that at key decision points, one is the kickoff to get input, but the second key decision point here would be, I, I'm assuming the 30% plan is where we still have the opportunity to make some adjustments. So I wouldn't want just two dates. I would want one date kickoff, one date at the 30% where we have something more concrete that we're building on. All right. Um, all right. So this this one here, the the next one here, where it talks um, um, about it, it really says, and they'll present the final design for approval. You know, it says the consultant will provide and propose light and propose appropriate town officials and review. Uh, the way this is written to me, and I, I may be reading it wrong, but I, I want to make sure that I'm not. This sounds like the, the PAC and the town staff will be working with this vendor and they'll come up with a final plan and say, here's what we recommend, as opposed to, to the council, here are the alternatives out there and here's a kind of scaling of those alternatives. So I've got two comments in this one really. One is I would hate to see the the, the staff and the advisory groups say, okay, this is what we think is the best thing and turn it over to council and give them one thing to say, yeah, you're nay on. I would rather that this final product 
final quote product that goes to the council says here are alternatives but with those a scaling of the alternative and here's what i mean by that we know that we can look at this as a way that the, the county's first study did it looked at it at cost what's the best cost savings to get the best lighting for pedestrians and then we heard that if you do that that really has some huge drawbacks for turtle disorientation turtle time so if the, the council says that our three key objectives are pedestrian and cyclist safety the turtle compliance and cost then I'd like to see alternatives presented to the council that says, look, this solution here on a scale of one to 10 is a nine for pedestrian lighting, but this solution is a two for turtles. It's a, a six for cost. This alternative is a eight for turtles. It's a five for pedestrians and it's a nine or a one for cost, whatever that is. But by looking at three key objectives, saying if we, the key objective was pedestrian safety, this is what we'd recommend. Here's where it would sit on a cost scale, you know, cheap, it's expensive. And here's where it would, would sit on a scale of compliance to turtle disorientation. One may mean it doesn't meet it at all. A five means, yeah, it meets the guidelines as written. And 10 means it exceeds the guidelines, that type of thing. But because I think without that, what we're and I'll ask, you know, Dan's on the phone. He can he can chip in here. But I would prefer to see the council get options, and then those options based on which key objective it addresses, so that they can then go in and balance the objective of pedestrian cyclist safety, the cost and turtle disorientation, and say, look, this is the best solution that addresses all three of those. Dan, you got any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, you know, Mr. Chair, I agree with you. The, if we are, at least it provides, if nothing else, input for the community to, to comment on public comment to uh, help give us some more decisions or give us some more input as to make decisions. I, I've, I've never been really a favor of, of having just, this is a take it or leave it option. So to, somewhere in there chelsea i think you know if you go back and, and you rework this it's how do you rework it in such a way that whatever the key objectives that they're going for because there are people that are going to argue public safety pedestrian safety is number one that's been stated and yet when that came up there was true and, and legitimate concerns i'm not downplaying the concerns there was concerns about disorientation and somehow we need to balance that and i'd like to be able to present the council with a document that shows on each of these key objectives, and there may be more, these three key objectives, where those plans uh, lie. I can tell you that this RFP was drafted as if the consultant, whomever they, they be, um, propose one recommendation um, that meets both FDOT's guidelines standards and um, turtle lighting standards, FWC standards, and that there were not to be options. It's a, their recommendation as the professional, what, what meets both and how the town should proceed. Okay. And so I'm just giving my feedback and yep. this is feedback that I would hope gets presented back to um, the town manager and the town manager, which is the reason we have a liaison on our committee um, that, that the, council clearly understands what they're going to be getting uh, it, it's not my call i understand that it's not the committee's call but i think uh, and i could be wrong and the rest of the committee jump in um, i'm trying to relate raise a legitimate concern that this will be handed to the council six months from now a year from now and we're going to be right back where we were because they said this is what we're going to do and they start asking questions and they said well we got to go back to the drawing board um <laughs> the other go ahead who's that you're exactly right on that because we've been doing this lighting study for years yes i mean um, and we've only they've only given one option the last time pretty much so i think they need a couple like you said a couple options to choose from uh, frankly whatever option is put out there 
there are conflicting uh, viewpoints on what should, where the priorities should lie, I think, and they're going to object to if their viewpoint is not represented in, in a way they're happy with. And ultimately, uh, you're right, we're going to be back to let, well, let's look at that more. Okay, so if you take that back, Chelsea, that is a concern. I mean, I, I get that there, I, I don't really think there's that much, there, there is a little more effort on the part of the vendor, but ultimately I think we'll be saving money by having them do that up front. Um, the other thing there might be where if you have two options, you have option yeah. one, they, they like a bunch of stuff in option one and they like a bunch of stuff in option two, then the vendor could go and put the stuff they like in one and the stuff they like in two to make, and it's all out there. And you can say, okay, combine these two and this is what they agree on. Um, so pack review, next comment uh, down was, oh um, yeah, this talked about um, the draft report will be submitted electronically to the staff for review and comment. I'd also like it to go back to the MRF and the, you know, the, so, the, the report, I'd like to also see that that draft report that that comes out goes back to both Murph and um, the advisory committee. Again, just a comment to look for gaps, look for clarifications. Um, and then we in turn, you give us, you know, whatever it is, a week, two weeks, whatever it is to, to get those comments back and we'll hold a meeting to, to do that. Um, and it also talks about in the uh, the uh, next comment down is uh, the draft report. It talked about, you know, text and digital. I would like to see you also request some video and I'm talking video of they're, they're proposing. I'm assuming that, you know, in the past we've seen different things, amber lighting, you know, the, the led light that's bright white and um, what that looks like. I, I think it's very hard for, anyone to be able to each one will visualize differently what bright means what dim means what uh oh is he frozen okay. he's back now <laughs> okay you froze there for a while there john oh all right so let me i don't know how much you got of that but the bottom line is I'd like to see in the response some video of the solutions and possibly the problems so that everybody is looking at what the lighting would in fact be as opposed to, you know, the, the amber lighting and people have their own view of amber lighting. I'd like to see actual video of what their proposed solution would look like in our environment. And one other thing that's not in here and it's not in my notes, but it came up when I was reviewing the minutes. Last time, the report from the, the county, um, I remember, I think his name was Dave, that came in and talked to us that we were in compliance and the turtles and, and um, that the, um, the misaligned lights in some cases, some that were old, you know, design, um, that that may have been the cause for the disorientations. And no one ever got, at least to my knowledge, no one ever got back to us and said, these were the, the turtle disorientations in the current configuration. And this or disorientation was a result of a low hanging old design light or a, a leaning light. I would like to see in here that there is also some assessment on the disorientations that have taken place one or two years, I don't know, whatever time frame it seems reasonable and compare that disorientation to the existing pattern so that we can say, yes, that turtle disorientation took place, but it's believed that it was a faulty design or an old fixture that would have caused that disorientation. And therefore the design they're proposing would eliminate that disorientation. Uh, I don't think it's, I don't think it's uh, fair to the council just to be able to anecdotally say that we had, you know, 20 disorientations without being able to relate those to the street lighting or the crosswalk lighting um, so that we can ensure that the design is not going to cause that again. 
those are, that's my comments. I have, I have a comment. So back to the turtle lighting, how do we know that once this study is done, the lighting isn't going to change for the turtles? Because, and I only say that because last year I purchased turtle friendly light bulbs from the town. And this year I got a, a violation for turtle not being turtle friendly. And it's the light bulbs that we purchased from the town. So how do we know that they're always going to be, the lights are always going to be able to be changed to be up to date for the new turtle changing friendly lighting? So how would you like that put in the RFP? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a point to that because what we implement today will not in the future be compliant and they're what we will have to accommodate for change at some point in time. Right. Uh, I can tell you right now, FDOT, um, I reached out to my FDOT, my contact, and um, I know that they were working on a short list of um, turtle friendly, you know, FDOT approved lights. Um, I don't know where it stands, and so I'm waiting to hear back from them, but um, that that is an operational issue that'll have to be addressed, you know, as things change, as people change, as turtle time changes, um, the personnel within there, you know, our environmental staff change. Just like John said earlier, one one person's perception of a light might be bright while another's may not. So um, it's just, we're gonna have to go, you know, roll with the punches and, and figure that out. Um, as we go operationally, but I think um, somehow accommodating for that in this RFP, you know, if it's interchangeable, if it's um, just, we don't want to put in something now that we know for sure is going to be compliant or not compliant in two years. So, so where we're, when we're talking about, you know, as part of this plan, they have to come up with a maintenance plan, that issue that you two are raising right now that Heidi raised and you're, you're articulating there, that you might want to give that as an example of how do we retain some currency what you know what do they recommend for currency and how viable do they think this solution is or adaptable uh, mr chair may i may I comment on something it, it, i haven't seen anywhere in here that there is any um place where they're going to come in and actually show you how these lights work. You had mentioned about dimming and brightness and Kelvin temperature and all that stuff. H has anyone ever come in and, and shown the committee the difference of how amber light dims versus non-amber light, how the Kelvin temperatures change uh, and how it affects the surfaces that it's gonna be projecting on? Do you mean mechanically or visually? Visually, I mean, with lighting, it's very visual. And, well, and simply by changing, Go ahead. Uh, simply by changing Kelvin temperature, depending on the, the surface that you're reflecting it off of, it, it can have a huge difference in what you're actually seeing and colors and shapes and, and things like that. I, I, I think it would be important to be able to see um, some sort of demonstration, even if it's a, on a, a much smaller scale, of, of how that would affect, you know, um, the striping on the on the side the crosswalk whether it's white or green or, or whatever color it is it, it makes a difference with the kelvin temperature on, on on what your eye actually sees and unless you actually have that in front of you where you can see the difference for instance uh i work in the lighting industry so i can tell you that if you put an apple or a piece of art and then you change the lighting and the kelvin temperature and and, and the lumens it, it makes that apple look like a completely different color so, so it's just something to maybe consider Okay, so let me ask this, Dan. That was why I wanted video as part of the, the presentation and the response is so that we could see that in our environment. Um, mm -hmm. You're asking though that we consider having them actually put a demonstration project out there. I just thought that, but personally, I think that's time consuming and expensive. I would and initially, I'd hope that if we could get them to present video showing the differences you're talking about. And that's why I'm asking for a sliding scale on these things that showing amber lighting versus the lumen versus the, you know, all the rest of that, if they were able to actually present that in their final thing, when the council's reviewing it saying, okay, here's a sterile Boulevard mid Island. Here's a sterile Boulevard at Times square and be able to show us visually what those different solutions would look like 
from there, you would get a view of it. And from there, you could decide you know, if you really, do we need to do a demonstration model or not? That, that, that was my you thought know, behind You know, a video, I can tell you, seeing light on video is, is much different than seeing light in person, simply because it depends on the resolution of your screen that you're seeing it on. It, there's, you know, how it was shot, which camera. I mean, there's a lot of different things that go into how it actually looks when you see it on a screen versus turning the lights off and putting something below it. You know, putting a light bulb into a fixture and temporarily wiring it to an outlet is, is not very difficult. It shouldn't take a lot of time. It, it's not uh, it's not very cost effective. I mean, you could probably get all the parts at Home Depot and do it for under 10 bucks. So I don't know if that's, a, you know, the will of, 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 the, of the committee to, to want to see something like that, but I think it would be very beneficial for you to see it. All right, so into, so the recommendation is that into this proposal that the vendor come up with a way to demonstrate, visually demonstrate the various solutions. And so that would be, you know, them coming up with, we need to put street lights here, or we're going to try and do this, put up temporary ones, whatever they come up with. But the idea is there needs to be a demonstration or a visualization, uh, an accurate representation of what the solution would look like. That's a great idea. I think so. Okay. Anybody else got something? You got enough, Chelsea? <laughs> From you all, absolutely. <laughs> Can't wait to hear Murph. Uh, okay. You guys gave me some homework. All right. So next up, um, it's not on the agenda, but um, we talked to Chelsea during the month just to get an idea of when we should meet. There were a few things that we got updates on. I'm going to read through them and let Chelsea just give a quick verbal. And then I, uh, as we're going through, I want to see what the committee wants to do on a couple of them. The first one, uh, the shelters, Chelsea, what's your update? Uh, the Bay Roads sidewalk is underway. Bay Road School Street sidewalk is underway. And uh, I am working with Lee Tran staff to try to put a shelter there. Um, you know, we're pouring the pad and hopefully get them to put the shelter um, as a pilot project. I know that um, I sent you guys the email. They approached me uh, probably a month or two ago. It's all blurred at this point um, about that they had um, enough right of way at Avenida Pescadora and Estero and that they were looking to put a shelter there. Um, and I haven't heard back from that. I know funding's kind of tight with them, but um, I asked them if instead of putting that there, they could put it at Bay Road since that area is still under construction and that may be a year or so out. Um, so that's kind of the update for the shelters. Okay, so with the shelters, um, right now the council is looking at a number of capital investments between Bayfront Times Square, Bay Oaks. And I'd like to get members input on this. I would, I would like to see, and I, and I know it's, you know, to have the town staff come up with um, a cost for shelters. We've already given the council where we think the 10 shelters would go, the, the bigger shelters. We've, we've given that list to them. And we have talked a number of times about what's in the, the shelter in the shelter design. And Chelsea has done a tremendous amount of work gathering cost of these various components. And budget's coming up in September. And uh, when they come back, August, September. And I'd like to have the town staff come up with a cost of a shelter with the various options as part of that components of it. And I'll read through what, what I have to cost out. One is just like at, at uh, Bay Road, the platform. The second is a shelter, covered shelter with two benches, because these are the larger stops. Um, the blue light, the code blue, you know, solution there where you have the ability for someone to get emergency help, whether it be from fire or uh, sheriff. Um, a standalone message board. Uh, we've looked at those and we could do it through Wi-Fi, but the idea is that 
um, to do messaging, public safety messaging, to also have the ability to give, you know, the trolley schedules, et cetera. Another amenity we've talked about, another add-on is camera, to have a camera there for uh, uh, emergency services to be able to actually see the person that's in distress. And then um, that would be an internet camera basically. And then we, with that, we got the security issues, I understand that. And then what other, other, other amenities? We had talked about bike racks, water and trash containers. And so whatever you wanna add or delete from that list, but the, the request would be that uh, through Chelsea, they come up and say, here's what it costs to put the platform. Here's what it costs for the shelter with two benches. Here's what it costs for the code blue lighting. Here's what it costs for um, you know, the uh, cameras. Here's what it costs for standalone. So that that would be available to the council as they're doing their longer term capital investment forecasting. So we had talked about putting in 10 of these. They may say, well, they want five, whatever it is. And let's say it costs 100 grand, just as an arbitrary figure. I would like them to at least have that capitalization to consider, assuming the county doesn't put any into it, so that as they're looking at money for Bay Oaks, Front Park, Bayfront Park, at Times Square, that they're also looking at the public safety of the individuals up and down the island in constructing these long-term shelters. Thoughts? Love the cafeteria plan. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's a great, it's a great approach uh, and gives council a lot of um, flexibility to decide how many and what amenities would be in each one. Could be different on the location, what amenities they would choose to put in. The idea is it would give them a ballpark so that they, because I'm assuming that with all that's going on economically right now, with the discussions for three major projects, that what I don't want is that the shelters get lost in that and the funding for that. Um, we had talked about gas tax being a, an option, but they talked about gas tax being an option for a lot of things. And quite frankly, gas tax is going to be going down, the, the costs are down, the revenue on gas is down. So I, I just want to make sure that shelters and public safety for the pedestrians up and down the island doesn't get lost in the big three. I will be more than happy to work with any one of you on compiling that data. Uh, I'll do it with you, Chelsea, to start putting it together. But I, I, do, I do think it's necessary. Um, they are going to be starting to, to work on the budget in the next month. And last year, I know you put it in, it was on the add-on list. They all said, yeah, it's great on the add-on list. They appropriated nothing. And there has been an extensive amount of discussion around the three major projects. And I have not heard one word about the shelters that were proposed to them over a year ago. I will, like I said, I will be more than happy to, to collect the, those numbers. We will have uh, with this Bay, Bay Road project, you know, we'll have uh, the conduits being put in, um, the pads being put in. So we'll have true numbers from that project, but like the code blue, um, the camera, some of those other items we'll have to um, scope out and, and price out. Yep. And, and I know you've got Chelsea. some of that, even if it's ballpark. Chelsea, with the, I got a question, if, if you don't mind, about the Wi-Fi and the cold. You say the conduit's in place. Is, is there conduit running down Estero Boulevard for um, data, for networking? Uh, the county uh, put some additional conduit in, in in preparation of future projects to come um, with no current designation or allocation of that, that conduit. So um, it's there. Um, but for our purposes on the side street, we intentionally put conduit um, again in, in the event that something like this were to come up in um, a phone or the code blue or whatever um, the committee and council chooses to implement, we already have it in the ground and we don't have to dig, up, dig it up twice. And so the county did the same thing, forward thinking on their part. Okay. I'm, I'm just trying to think. Fiber? I believe so. No, I'm talking. 
no, I'm talking just conduit, which is it's just an open tube to be able to pull things to it later. Because if you're talking about cameras and other the network, there has to be a network to be able to get there. And if you're talking about a Wi-Fi camera, as far as I know, the town doesn't have Wi-Fi, a town Wi-Fi. So to be able to connect a camera from, say, Avenida Pescadora to, to something that the town can maintain, you have to either have a, a Wi-Fi network set up or a cable run to it from a router or a switch somewhere um, through a conduit. That was my question. So it's just a conduit. There's no fiber in those pipes. Just the conduits. Okay. That was a waste. But it makes it a lot easier for the contractor down the road to pull it through. Um, I, I get it, but it also made it easier just to pull the damn fiber when you're putting the conduit in. But anyhow, aside from that. Uh, okay, so Chelsea and I will come up with some numbers, and if there's an area that we can't because um the estimate to come up with actual putting fiber in there for connectivity we'll we'll write that up that way and then the council can at least decide whether they think that's a viable addition or not to the shelters so that's on chelsea and i um branding chelsea yes branding update uh that's been turned over to our pio jennifer dexter jenny dexter um, and I know that she's been working diligently on that. So speaking of the PIO, in that RFP, and you'll see in the comments, I don't remember covering it when I went through them, asking for a communication plan to be built in between the vendor, the town staff, and the community. I would like to see that that PIO actually, as this thing kicks off, and the, the committee or the, the, the vendor goes through, that she comes up with a communication plan to keep the community apprised of what's going on, et cetera. You know, this is what the RFP is designed to do. This was the vendor selected. This is the kickoff meeting. Here's the members of the various PAC. You know, here's the advisory groups they're doing. But uh, keep a steady flow of communication during that whole RFP with the public. Yes, that's very important. So I can tell you from the, the three big projects, um, she, for Bayside Park, and I know, I think she's starting to work on one for um, Bay Oaks, is Q&As to put out and to continually update as more questions come, get, come in and we can push that information out to anybody inquiring on the Facebook page, et cetera. So um, this could be some, uh, another item that we do draft a Q&A for. And I think that's part of it. But I think that the recommendation to the council should be that they ask her or instruct the manager to have her actually write a communication plan that's more than just Q&A. When are you going to communicate? What are you going to communicate? We're going to have, let's say it's a six-month study that's done by this group. What's her communication plan that it communicates to the general public each of these phases and, and the, the whatever occurs at those phases, where decision points are, where endpoint puts are, that's a communication plan. And, and I think if I was on a council, I would demand that I have a communication plan in these projects that's more than just, we're gonna put out Q and A's. Noted. All right, so that was branding. Uh, foot of the bridge. We meet with uh, via Zoom tomorrow, uh, F dot and the county to discuss that proposal um, and funding, timeline, et cetera. Um, and I can let you know what comes of that meeting after it. Um, what I'd like to know, because and they propose that design. So just a, a quick history, because Dan, who's new as our liaison. We met last year, we saw the design, we did an emergency meeting to get together to recommend crosswalks at the foot of the bridge, some design. We presented that, we had zero crosswalks. They came back with nine or 12. We never heard why zero was rejected and nine or 12 remained. When they did the proposal, I wanna say in early March, I think it was, um, uh, I was at the meeting and I met with the county engineer afterwards and 
he said that, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to paraphrase what he said, but it was basically that some of those, there were reasons we couldn't do it. Some of the barriers that were proposed wouldn't work because, and he said he'd be more than willing to come and explain to the committee and have a discussion with the committee where some of the recommendations couldn't be accepted and why they couldn't be accepted. Then right after that COVID hit and everything shut down. So the question is twofold. One, to the members, do you want him to come and tell us the reasons that there has to be nine or 12 crosswalks there so we can have a discussion? Or is this just a, you know, an exercise on our part to listen to this and say, wow, that's nice to know, but there's nothing we can do with it because we're not part of the design. And yes, is there a little, a little uh, disappointment in the way it's been going? Yes, in my voice. But the question of the committee is, uh, do we want to try and get proactive again there in there and give this to the new council or do we just want to let it go? Well, l let me, let me extend on that. So the previous council endorsed the plan um, and that was relayed to FDOT. Um, mind you, this project has no funding, no timeline, nothing. It's an idea, a thought, a notion right now. Um, and so that is kind of what our discussion is tomorrow is funding, who's funding it, who's gonna run the project, is it gonna be the county or is it gonna be FDOT? Um, are all of the pieces in place to make it happen, um, i.e. seafarers, um, Crescent Beach Park, the small parcel that um, was TPI, that the um, Ocean Jewels property, Etc. cetera. Um, so this is super preliminary, but like I said, the previous council endorsed it and that's what um, we've been running with so far. Member thoughts? John, if I could, I, I guess my question would be, do we have a realistic opportunity here to influence the outcome uh, or direction the project takes, or are we just along for the ride at this point? My question exactly. I, I agree with you, Jim. Tom? You know, it, it just seems that this, this is a recurring issue that um, I go back to the uh, RRFBs that we endorsed uh, at, at many crosswalks on the island. Um, it seems like uh, we put in the effort and then FDOT says, uh, no, uh, thanks, thanks for your effort, but no. Uh, I just wonder what's the point. Anybody else, Heidi? You got I any? agree. No? I mean, we, we with the base of the bridge, like Tom said, the crosswalk stuff. We've put in a lot of time, and we just—it's like doesn't matter. All right, Mike, you got any comment? No, I don't know if we, you know, putting a crosswalk near the foot of the bridge is a good idea. Anyway, I think that, uh, you know, possibly it's not maybe a good spot to. To do a crosswalk i don't know but we'll see so let me do it this way because uh, if i'm hearing people right there is a sense of frustration and i think we've all kind of felt it at times where we do a lot of work i mean the work that, that you guys did and how you mapped out every crosswalk and we're not getting the feedback um from the council whether they agree disagree but dan you're on the line so i'm not going to put you on the spot but i wanted you to hear that in that there is a level of frustration with not, not just this committee, but several that the advisory committees put in a lot of work and there's some really bright people on these committees that work very hard and they make the recommendation. I know Chelsea takes those recommendations and she moves them forward, but some of them I never see on any council meeting. Um, some of them we most, we never get a full feedback from with what the manager is doing or what the council did you know, offline to discard or accept these things. And so I, I, I wanted you to hear that, Dan, so that, you know, as our liaison, you, you can represent that feeling as to what do you want us to work on or not. If you and a council believe that you're going to actually take our input, consider that input, give us feedback and a kind of a back and, back and forth on what this stuff means, I think everybody here is more than willing to do that work. But on the other hand, if we're doing the work and it goes into some black void, 
that you either don't get or you choose not to respond to, but don't give us the feedback, then the question is, you start to tell us exactly what you want us to work on, and that's what we'll do. Well, and not let me inter intervene real quick. And that that with the previous council, and I even I believe even the prior council to them, um, there has been a transition for these advisory committees where, you know, maybe two three years ago it was a bottom up approach where the advisory committees came up with ideas and thoughts and, and you know, um, items that should be implemented or considered. And since probably about a year and a half ago, it's kind of been the reverse, where um, with council direction, I'll, if it's the chair that goes to the committee and looks for direction, um, that you all and every other advisory committee is not continually rehashing the same subject over and over um, to take it to council and it to be nipped in the butt. So I think that communication with council either via um, an a email from the you know consensus here and an email sent to the clerk to be read um, if you know since this pandemic if you don't want to show up um, or showing up to a committee or to the council meeting and say hey these are the items we're working on if you agree to con continually move forward with them um, i think getting that direction especially since the changeover of council might be beneficial to this committee um, and i've said the same thing to my advice my anchorage advisory committee too um, because we don't want you spending a lot of time on something um, my time as well and working together on a topic for um, when that's perhaps not the direction council wants to go and, and I get that, Chelsea. And I, um, so two thoughts. First, we were specifically asked to talk about crosswalks up and down the island. And that's what we did. And we didn't get the feedback. We were specifically asked and actually originally we're told we're going to be at the meeting with the county and FDOT to discuss our recommendations at the foot of the bridge. And it didn't happen. So here's, uh, I'll, I'll make one more attempt. So committee, let me know, but I can draft a letter and asking them specifically, I'll tell them, these are what we have on our plate. Which of these do you want us to continue with? Which of these do you want us to just drop? And is there any additional thing you would like us to do? I'll compose a letter. I'll get it to Chelsea. I'll have her circulate it for comment to the group. We'll bring it back. And then we'll send a formal letter um, to the council. And our liaison has heard this discussion. So he'll be able to embellish or discuss that further, assuming that we're not at the meeting. Um, next up. Is... Wait, can, I, can I backtrack one real quick? I'm going to show you government efficiency. I just got an email about the conduit on Estero Boulevard and they have uh, four one and a quarter inch con HDP conduits on both sides of Estero and that pull boxes are being installed. Um, with tracer wire and pull string, but it's not recommended. Um, pulling fiber early is not recommended at this point. So um, there's government efficiency for you. Somebody's listening in and uh, sent me an email. Uh, and Mr. Chair, if I can also, since we backtracked a little bit, uh, I want to comment on on what you had asked about um, being heard. And, and I can tell you, I followed along with what you guys were doing with with the crosswalks and, and the amount of time and effort that you put in and I can understand your frustration I was on board cabin and I can I could tell you a lot of committees felt the same way that your committee feels that they put a lot of time and effort and 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 it doesn't always get heard and you know what I would like to see if you're asking my opinion is if, if someone it doesn't necessarily have to be the chair but if someone from the committee can at least once a month come in to address the council to inform, uh, inform us what exactly you've been working on, why you've been working on it, and, and why you feel it's important. You know, I hate to use the old analogy that, you know, the loudest voice gets get heard the most, but it, 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 it's kind of true. It's, you know, I can relate to council what we talk about here and, and show the same enthusiasm, but, you know, the more people that can show that same enthusiasm, I think goes a long way to stick in the minds of the other council members. I know, at least for me, it does when I hear from other people. Okay. And and for the record, I, I I agreed with what you as the 
or committee had laid out at the, at the base of the bridge. Uh, that was a better design, but I can't speak as to why the previous council decided to not go or why they chose to not inform you. Can't speak to that, but but I, I will tell you that I, I did see what you put together and, and I was in favor of that plan. Okay, so that, that's what we'll do and move forward. I'll write the letter, get it for comments. We'll send a formal letter asking what we're in on, not in on, and we'll look to, uh, you know, the dance point, given monthly updates to the, the council, if that's the way we need to stay in front of them. Um, next up is the downtown sidewalks update. That is the sidewalks. Um, as you all know, that's part of a larger project, the water and stormwater of, of that area. Um, council had a lengthy discussion prior to their uh, summer recess about stormwater um, and water rates. Um, and so that project, that sidewalk project will be in tandem with the downtown project of, of first, second, third, fifth Crescent Street. Um, and so we are 95% um, done with the design of those sidewalks. It's just waiting for that, that other project to be funded and designed and move forward with construction. Any target date? I'd have to talk to the utility director and find out. Okay, yeah, it'd be nice to know, just to get some idea when people are asking when those are gonna be and, put in place. Well, I know regardless, um, it, it is the intent to do that project outside of season. So we're, so you have somewhat of an idea of a timeline. So it could be next, next year, year, it could be two years from now. Okay, all right. And then the last thing was the, the bike pass and the sidewalk markings. So we had that contractor offer a free demo um, with the pandemic, they, they halted their traveling. Um, that's not saying we couldn't find another local vendor and, and pay to do a demo. Um, but I was holding off, um, just we have been encouraged to limit our spending if we can. Um, so I was hoping that maybe next fiscal year we could get that demo back. Um, it was free, um, free as me, so they say. So hopefully we can get them back down here and do a template and a test and see if that's something we wish to move forward with as a committee and as council in the town. Okay. Uh, any other updates anybody need that I forgot here? All right, so member items. Tom, you got anything you want to add? Uh, oh, Je that, I just want, I, I'm sorry, I just remembered uh, Scott here is from FIRE. Uh, uh, and first, anything, any reports, you want to give us any updates? I appreciate you com coming. I'm, unfortunately, we're doing it remotely for the first time, but uh, I do appreciate, you know, the uh, FIRE department coming to give us their monthly updates and hear what's going on and give us their input. No, it's my pleasure and I'm glad to be a part of the committee. Um, just sat quietly today taking it all in being the first time and I'm on the computer here while you guys are talking looking up acronyms and stuff so uh, <laughs> give me some time to get caught up and um, I'll probably be more chatty as we move forward. Thanks for coming Scott. Thanks for having me. Uh, member items, Tom. Uh, there has been nothing relevant to Fort Myers Beach in the MPO CAC meetings. Um, uh, work is going to progress one of these days on the new bridge, but uh, that's been uh, mired in the process of accumulating the unbelievable number of permits that are required to do something like that. Um, but, uh, Which bridge? Nothing, uh the, the uh, south end or the north end? Yes, sir. The B. Carlos Pass Bridge. Yeah. So uh, that's that's moving, but at the at the speed of uh, of tar. <laughs> so uh, so uh, other than that, nothing relevant to Fort Myers Beach in those meetings. Okay. Jim. Nope. Tom. Uh, Mike. Basically, I'm confused with the with the lighting. Is FPL still involved with this with our lighting? I mean, are we still planning? I mean, are we going with contractors, or is FPL still in the picture as far as using their lights and so forth? As I understand it, this is what the study is going to do. They're going to consider FPL. Uh, FPL is a partner. FPL is a supplier, or alternatives to FPL. 
that's what's going to come out of the study itself. So currently they are the supplier. Um, they are the, the vendor we're using, but the study has been <clears throat> based on a, the comments from council the, and a couple in particular in council. Um, they are looking not just at FPL, but they are looking at any alternatives, whether it's FPL or private contract or, or town run. <coughs> All right. Well, it's, uh, you know, I was with FPL for a long time, but I'm just saying FPL is not going to allow uh, contractors to put lights on our poles or put lights on their poles. Um, basically, it would, if they used another contractor, they would have to set new poles, which would be ugly down through here, and they would have to, you know, string wire to them because that's the only way they're going to be able to use another light other than FPL's light on a, on the poles. But I'm, I'm, they need to be serious about this. That would co be astronomical cost to, to go with another contractor. I really think that they need to be moving towards FPL and making sure that we got the, the lighting. Um, I talked to Chelsea. I don't mind being a, you know, a uh, go between between the people out there and the town as far as trying to, uh, you know, get the, the right people involved or whatever. But it's, it's important, I think, that we stay with FPL you know, just for um, aesthetics and so forth. But uh, they're just not going to let a, a contractor hung, hang their lights on our poles. Just not going to happen. I mean, we go into subdivisions, and if they want to use their own lights, FPL says, go ahead. And uh, they put set their poles and put their lights up, and then we string wire to them. It just would be, it would be very expensive. So anyway, that's just my two cents. Okay. Um, and, but I do know specifically that um, there was a lot of discussion about do we stay with FPL, do we go away from FPL, do we consider alternatives, and the way this proposal is being written is that the whoever the consultant is that wins this bid is to look at all alternatives, um, FPL and other, other vendors, um, uh, such as Duke and others they've mentioned in the past, and uh, also what it would be if the town took it over. Uh, Heidi. Can I jump on this real quick? I sure. failed to mention. I did have an email from uh, a Kevin Mahaney, and it said, I would like you to convert all street lights to 3,000K to 4,000K white LED street lights. They're brighter, safer for pedestrians, and save energy. So just that email came in, um, oh, really early in the morning. Uh, so I just wanted to make note that we did have that comment. Okay. Who's he with, Chelsea? I did not say. I'm sorry. So that was just a public comment, right, Chelsea? That was just an email to me about the understanding that you all will be speaking about the lighting. So. Okay. Okay. So, and, and some, we want to make sure that the the public understands we we're not coming up with a solution. This was to respond to to ensure that the RFP that went out was as inclusive as it could be, and would come back with the best alternatives um, for the council to have that dialogue and decision on. We don't really, we're not having input into the design with specifics. Heidi. Um, I don't really have anything else on the lighting study or anything, just that um, since we are public safety, I think that uh, closing our beaches and leaving Lee counties open will be a huge issue. Just my two cents. <laughs> I believe that's I believe that's a one o'clock meeting that you're in talking. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. I don't have anything, but you know, I did, and I I apologize to Mr. Fleming here, but um, when I was going through the thing, I forgot all about Ron. Uh, did you hear from him, Chelsea? I mean, did did he respond at all? Bear with me. We sent this agenda out some time ago. Let me look. I I believe he may not hold on. Justice. Well, Chelsea's looking, Heidi, you know, it's really that the, the poor council is, is really handcuffed by Lee County. Yeah. You know, when we have we have uh, big, big Lee County major beaches in the middle of our island. Uh, I really feel for them. There's it's a no win situation. Exactly. This is all on Lee County to me, all of it. And I completely agree with you. This is going to be a nightmare. 
John, I did not hear back from Mr. Fleming. Okay. So he's absent. Absent? Just like Ed. Just like Ed. <laughs> absent, absent without approval. How's that? So, um, I have nothing, I, you know, I've said more than my piece to this, so. Uh, I, have, I have a couple things, if you don't mind. Nope, it's all yours. Okay, um, I just want to make you all aware that each department every month puts out a monthly report um, and we take a lot of time doing those and getting updates of projects and statuses and um, what you know staff has done for the previous month. Um, those go out around the 15th of each month. Um, and those, those might you know, keep you in tune with everything that we've been working on. I know communication has, has been somewhat difficult during this pandemic, but um, just take, take a peek at those um, so you'll, you'll see what, you know, Public Works and all of the other departments have been working on. Um, I know that there has been a list of lights that were turned off for turtle season um, through our, through FPL, but um, as suggested by our environmental team and turtle time. So um, there is a slew full of, of lights that were turned off. Um, to prevent any uh, disorientations. Also, the um, down Crescent Street and um, I believe mainly down Crescent Street, there's a, a handful of old FPL poles that we're working with them to have them removed that should have been done years ago, but um, we are working to make sure that they have those removed um, ASAP. It's, I think they were waiting on um, either CenturyLink or um, Comcast to move their their lines over to the new poles. Um, so just as an FYI, and then last but not least, um, the signal for Old San Carlos and Estero Boulevard, we just submitted 100% design plans to FDOT last week. Um, their fiscal year starts today. Um, that funding was allocated for this current fiscal year, their FDOT's fiscal year. Um, and so we, We'll be moving through that lap process. It is new for us. Um, and we are excited to get some grant funding to have that light installed. So, Great, nice job. Chelsea, I have, I have one question. Where do we find the monthly reports from that you were talking about? I believe they're posted online. I'll confirm from the clerk's office. I know that they're emailed out to the counselors. Um, they used to be on the MNP sessions, but um, I will find out and make sure that those are published digitally for the public to see. So, uh, Councilman Ehlers, do you have anything you want to, any comments, closing comments before we move on? Yeah, just a, just a couple things. I wanted to, if I could, touch on the, the FPNL uh, and their polls and the lights. It's my understanding that as of now, the FPNL doesn't have a light that fits in the scope that needs to be for both turtle time and pedestrian safety. And, and that was the reasoning for, for reaching out and trying to get information from outside contractors as far as costs and, and options. Um, so I think it's important that we, you know, not just be pigeon and hold to, to FPNL that we, we do see what the other options are so that we can make a informed decision as far as what's the best best option for the town. Um, it, as, far as, I'm, as far as I'm aware, there's really no timeline as to when FPNL could potentially have uh, a lot like that would be suitable for everybody to agree on. So it could be a year, it could be two years. It just comes down to how long do we wanna keep pushing this lighting down the road? Um, you know, is it, unfortunately it takes someone to get seriously hurt or killed before we we have to really take this serious um i also would like to touch on what chelsea was talking about as far as the shutting the lights off i've noticed that it, it's extremely dark with those lights off i understand why they have to be shut off um but is it possible that we could maybe discuss or maybe this is something the committee could discuss and and bring it to council about um, temporary lighting that could go lower on those poles to help illuminate those new sidewalks uh, I'm sure as many of you have several, several times I've, I've, people have just stepped off the sidewalk and because those lights are off, you don't see them. And if they're wearing the dark clothes, it, I've come several times to, to hitting someone and, and it's just because they're walking in places that aren't illuminated. 
So I'm really concerned that someone's going to get hurt because those lights are shut off. I can tell you, I'm never a fan of shutting lights off, but I do understand why they're off. Um, I, I just think that there's something in here until we can figure out what exactly the town's going to do as far as the lighting on a sterile boulevard to, to prevent having to shut those lights off or we need to try to figure something out. I, I'd hate to see someone get hurt. Um, all that being said, I, I look forward to working with everybody on the, uh, the committee here. And, and if you ever need anything from me, please feel free to reach out and call me, email me, however I can meet with you, whatever you have, I'm, I'm always available. So uh, just let me know. So Dan, on the temporary lighting, um, I'll add that to the letter when I'm saying these are what we're working on. These are things that may need to be worked on. I'll put that in there. The letter will go so you'll have it at your next meeting. You'll have it before the next meeting. Um, so the last, before we go to setting up the next one, I do want to, you know, congratulations to Jim. He's been um, selected to uh, fill the fire commissioner slot for the town of Fort Myers Beach, um, the vacancy there. And if you're as good at that as you are at this, we, we got a winner. So good luck in November. Thank, thank you very much, John. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, next meeting. So this is July 1st. So we've had our July meeting. Um, between now and then, we will draft a letter. You all get to comment on it uh, to the council as to what they want us to work on, not work on. I'm assuming that we'll get some feedback on the comments we made on the lighting study um, and that that final lighting study will, I don't know if it goes in front of council before it's released or whatever, but uh, if it is, that's great. That gives us one more public comment uh, time to comment on it. Um, but I guess the question for you, Chelsea, is between now and the next meeting, do you expect to have any updates on a lighting study or will we just review it at the next meeting or not review it again at all? So once a RFP or ITB or RFQ, all of our, you know, alphabet soup that Scott was, talk Scott was talking about, um, once it is out on the street and advertised, um, we, we cannot talk about it. It's called a cone of silence. Um, if you are on the selection advisory committee, which um, I would most likely be on, um, but the goal was to um, get Murph's comments. I believe they meet mid month um, and then hopefully put it out by end of July, early August, um, and then have it out for, we have to have it out advertised at a minimum of 30 days. Um, I was looking to maybe extend that to 45 days, maybe longer. Um, and then once those bids come in, um, we do the typical process. So selection advisory committee recommendation to council, um, make sure there's funding in the budget. So. Okay. So at this point, we're just waiting until it comes back around. Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll write this letter to make sure it's all inclusive. We'll get it to the council and ask for direction when they meet again. Uh, before we go forward, I know that some, some of us, some of you are, their terms end in October. And so I want to get this letter and a response from council as to what they want us to work on and how they're going to deal with our recommendations. Um, I want to get that so that by September, we know that because the terms expire at the end of the month and that may affect who applies and doesn't apply. That was just a two cent commentary at the end there. <laughs> so any other comments before we go? Now, my question to you all is, um, do you want to have, uh, some of the other advisory committees are not meeting every month, um, but some are choosing to, if they have topics to work on. Um, I, my question to you all is, um, do you want to move forward with your typically, you know, regularly scheduled meetings and we can do those via Zoom um, we do have the opportunity to do them at town hall. We are trying to limit the number of meetings here at town hall. As you all know, we're still closed to the public. It's by appointment only. Um, but that's kind of, or do you want to take, you know, the month off or we can continue. I can provide written updates to you all as I have during this, this the past couple months. Um, that's really the direction I'm looking for from you all because we have, you know, of course, the agenda to get out and items to coordinate and schedule if um, you choose to meet in person. Uh, I'll give you my two cents. If we get this letter to the council for their first meeting in August and we get a response from them, then we would have something to talk about in August. 
if they table responding to what they want us to work on, if the lighting study hasn't moved forward, if there's no action on our part for foot of the bridge, then meeting again will be right where we are. Because the things that are outstanding, the big things are, um, what do they do with budget on shelters, the lighting study, and what they want us to work on or not work on. And if they take no action, I don't know what we talk about next time until they do something. That was my two cents. Is there going to be an August council meeting? I thought it was it was pushed back to September. There's August council meetings. Okay. I concur with Jim then. Uh, un unless we don't get a res if we don't get a response, there's no point in having a meeting, I don't think. All right, so the next week or so, I'll get you a copy of the letter to comment on, and that's what we'll make sure that that's on their agenda for August. Uh, Dan, he's, he's aware that we're going to be sending it, so he can be looking for it. Uh, he knows that what we're trying to do is get their reaction, get their response, so that we can decide our next steps in our next meeting. So my, my last question is, if, if this August meeting moves forward, is the preference Zoom or is the preference in person? I can tell you, I have to do Zoom in August. That's I just me, but I but I can zoom in. But I prefer Zoom as well. Zoom. That's the, you got uh, enough. It okay, it doesn't really matter to me either way. Okay. All right, well, I will look forward to uh, your email, John, and I hope everyone stays safe and healthy and has a great 4th of July weekend. So, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. And we're done. Second. Hey, everybody, enjoy the Thanks. month. Bye. Great meeting, John. Thank you. Bye. Bye.